For every neurotransmitter we've discovered, there are problems that arise when those neurotransmitters malfunction, often because too much or too little are active in the synapses. This can be caused by anything from diet to stress, but some people are also just born without the ability to synthesize some of these neurotransmitters. In this video lesson, we'll look at two diseases that can arise from impairment to neurotransmitter function, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Michael J. Fox, aka Marty McFly from only the best movie in the universe, stunned the world in the late 90s when he revealed that he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at age 29. Recently, he reflected on what that was like. When I, when I went public with it, I had some real misgivings. I, I, I didn't know whether that was something I really wanted to do. And then once I did it, the genie was out of the bottle and, and, and I had this feeling of kind of desperation, like, oh my God, what did I do? And, yeah. Affecting over 1 in 25 people above the age of 80, Parkinson's disease has been well documented and studied. Let's take a closer look at what it is. Named after English doctor James Parkinson, Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological condition that affects the body's control of movement. Progressive, meaning unfortunately it gets worse and worse over time. Symptoms primarily have to do with movement, so a slow movement or even involuntary movement, tremors, a reduced facial expression, and eventually even depression and difficulties sleeping. Parkinson's seems to be linked to a drop in dopamine production due to the degeneration of substantia nigra, this bit over here. What actually causes the degeneration is unknown, although it's thought to be a combination of genetics, diet, and environmental factors. Unfortunately, part of what the substantia nigra does is coordinate movement, which explains many of the symptoms of Parkinson's. So if low levels of dopamine is one possible cause for Parkinson's, then in theory, increasing dopamine levels in the brain should treat it. And indeed, Parkinson's disease can be treated with drugs that are precursors of dopamine or that prevent dopamine from being broken down in the brain. It's worth saying though that there is no full cure for Parkinson's. Most of these treatments simply slow the symptoms and unfortunately become less effective as the disease progresses. Moving on. The Notebook, a novel by Nicholas Sparks, depicts an elderly lady being read the story of her life. However, because she has Alzheimer's disease, she does not realize the story is about her, nor that the person reading it is actually her husband. It's a beautiful story that has since been made into a movie, but one criticism is that it shows the lady occasionally coming out of her memory loss, as it were, suddenly remembering everything, and then just as quickly going straight back to how she was before. It works for the novel's plot, but many have pointed out that that's not what Alzheimer's looks like at all. So what actually is Alzheimer's? Affecting about 50 million people in the world, Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by cell loss in the cortex of the brain. It's really easy to visually see the difference between an unaffected and affected brain. However, it's not actually possible to confirm that this happened to the brain while the patient is still alive. Interestingly, one of the first brain structures to be affected is the hippocampus, which we'll see in later video lessons is responsible for the formation and retrieval of a lot of our memory, which explains why memory loss is one of the key symptoms of Alzheimer's. In fact, one of the earliest symptoms is loss of recent declarative memory, such as what happened the day before or forgetting names. But towards the end of the disease's progression, the patient might not even be able to recognize family memory. Members. Considering how widespread Alzheimer's disease is, what causes it is still very poorly understood. Only 1-2% to of cases are purely genetic. There are many theories, but none have been strongly confirmed. One hypothesis suggests that it has to do with unusual protein deposits and amyloid plaques in the brain. Another one is that Alzheimer's patients often have low levels of acetylcholine, but of course correlation doesn't imply causation. Although neurons that release acetylcholine in the brain are also associated with memory and learning, so that might also explain some of the symptoms. And so, just like with Parkinson's, increasing the activity of acetylcholine in the brain appears to have some effectiveness. Inhibitors of cholinesterase, which is the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, has shown some success for Alzheimer's patients. Ultimately, there is no cure for Alzheimer's, so treating the symptoms is still the best choice we have for both the individual and their caretakers. So much more research is needed to better understand the causes of these diseases and how to help people living with it but there is hope. Established in 2000 by Michael J. Fox himself, the foundation to date has funded over a billion dollars in Parkinson's research, and similar efforts go into studies on Alzheimer's. Interfering with neurotransmitter function can have huge effects in the body, but the more we understand it, the closer we might get to one day finding a cure.